Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about limits and this is going to be a, a just a quick overview of the type of limits that we see in calculus. <clears throat> I'm not going to go in depth in really what limits are. I'm going to save that for your calculus class, but it's kind of a quick overview of what we can do with limits um, and, um, and finding the limits, especially talking about one-sided limits. So that's what our goal is today. So let's take a look at what the basic idea of a limit is. Now, the basic idea of a limit is that uh, as we approach a value, as x approaches a value, so here we're looking at the x-axis, so as x gets closer to a value a, now I can make it like, let's say this is, this is a right here, okay, there's a, so as x gets closer and closer to a, on the graph here, what does the y value approach? So we're approaching this point from both sides here. And as we approach this point, and we get closer and closer and closer and closer, infinitely closer to A, what does Y do on the graph? Now, the, the, one of the important things to know about limits is that a limit does not, you don't have to have the value of the function you don't have to have the value of the limit on the function. So, for example, if, if let's say this was an open circle here, um, but it was a closed circle here, then even though f of even though f of a is equal to whatever this value is here, I'm going to just say y. Um, the limit is equal to whatever this y value is on the graph. So, because that's the that's the value that we're getting closer and closer and closer to. So, a limit. As x approaches a, that's how we say that. So the limit as x approaches a. Oops, man, I cannot write for anything here. As x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, some number. Sometimes we don't have, we have a limit that doesn't exist, and we'll see one that today, of one that doesn't exist. But as x approaches a, so this is the format. And we've seen this in... Uh, in my class anyway we've seen this in terms of n behavior but if we're looking at this problem here at this graph here some function f of x okay and so in this case the limit I use a cursive here limit as x approaches 0 okay so as my x goes to 0 of my function is going to be equal to so as x gets closer and closer and closer to 0 Okay, as the x values get closer to zero, the y values get closer and closer to one. So this is one. So that would be the limit. All right. So let's take a look at some algebra. How do we do limits using algebra? Well, for the most part, if we have a polynomial, we can just plug in. Polynomials are what we consider continuous, and you'll learn that in calculus a little bit more. But um, the limit as x approaches 1, what we do is we're just going to plug in 1 for x. All right, so we just straight plug it in, do the math, and we get negative 3. That's our limit, okay? So we just plug it in. Now, if we plugged it into this second problem here, so the first thing you should always do is try plugging in the value because you never know. It might just work out to a number. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh-oh. We've got something 0 over 0, which is not 0. This actually is called indeterminate. Um, an indeterminate 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, that's something that can't, well, can't be determined. It's not, does not exist. And if you take calculus, you'll find out that 1 over 0 actually has something that we can actually do something with that in limits. It has a, a meaning. But um, 0 over 0 is indeterminate. So what we do is we're going to go back to here and we're going to factor. And we're going to simplify this. And we can factor the denominator using a difference of two squares. Okay. And then you'll notice here that we can simplify that. And we're going to get, so now we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x plus 2 because this simplified. All right, so this is equal to this limit. And we're going to plug in 2, and we're going to get 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. And that's our limit. Okay, so that's how we do them algebraically. Either we just plug it in, 
or when we plug it in and we find it indeterminate, we're going to use some simplifying here. Okay, let's take a look at some other things that we can do with limits. We've got these things called one-sided limits. And one-sided limit, if you, if you think back here, um, I'm coming from both sides here looking for that point. So really, one-sided limit means I'm coming from this direction and from that direction. So let's take a look at this. And so a one-sided limit, um, like a limit, a limit as x approaches negative 1, and I put a little negative on there, and what that means is from the left. Okay, so you're coming from the left, so you're going, you're going this way. All right, so you're approaching negative 1, x value of negative 1, you're approaching it from the left, so coming towards it from the left, and for this function here, as I approach it towards the left, what does it approach the y value? One. Okay, so that one-sided limit is one. As x approaches negative one, what do you think that little plus means? Yep, it's from the right. So now I'm coming from the other side. So I'm coming this way. From the right, as x gets closer to negative one, from the right, y, is closer to 1. It turns out that if these two one-sided limits are equal, then the limit as x approaches negative 1, okay, that's from both sides, is equal to whatever these two were equal to, okay? So these, these two one-sided limits have to be equal for the whole limit to be equal. Well, if you take a look over here, you'll notice that uh, if I do the limit the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, okay, as I approach 2 from the left, going this way, the y value is going to get closer and closer to 4. Whereas the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, okay, as I get closer and closer this way from the right, that y value gets closer and closer to three. Remember, it doesn't have to be closed circle for the limit to exist right there, okay? So the limit is what the y value is getting closer to, which is three in this case. Since these two do not equal, we're going to say that the limit as x approaches two, all right, these two are not equal. So if it doesn't equal, the limit does not exist. Now, I, I, you can also put DNE, that's, what I, that's okay for my class, so it does not exist, the limit does not exist. So these are one-sided limits. All right, so the last thing is a, a limit at infinity, and we've seen limits at infinity. Um, we've seen it in terms of end behavior. So a limit as x approaches negative infinity is going to be the horizontal asymptote. Now, if I don't have a horizontal asymptote, then, you know, it's going to be either does not exist or um, infinity or negative infinity, whether it's positive or negative here. So um, it's the same thing. Let me put a plus or minus there because it's the same thing for horizontal asymptote, okay? Um, the other one that we haven't done is the limit as x approaches a, so any number from the left or the right of f of x, if that equals positive or negative infinity, meaning to go up or down forever, then this is going to tell us where we can find a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph I have here. And, and, and I have a, a vertical asymptote here at um, negative 1. Okay, negative 1. And I have a vertical asymptote here, positive 1. And you can notice here that I also have a horizontal asymptote at 2. So let me label these limits to infinity here. I've got right here the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to 2 because that's where as x gets negative, 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 it's going to get closer. Y is going to get closer and closer, closer to 2. Okay, over here, the same thing happens for the end behavior as I go out to positive infinity. 
This is also going to be two because it has to do with our horizontal asymptote. Now I've got I've got a couple over here too. Now here I have the limit as x approaches negative one from the left, and as I approach negative one, so as x gets closer and closer, as the x values get closer to negative one, the y values are going to get more and more infinite. They're going to go up to positive infinity. So this is positive infinity. Down here, if I have the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right, notice here, as I approach negative 1, x values approach negative 1 from the right, the y values start to go down, 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 forever down, forever down is negative infinity. I have that same situation over here. The limit as x approaches one from the left, this time we're going this way from the left, is going to be negative infinity. And over here, the limit as x approaches positive 1 from the right is going to be positive infinity. Okay? All right, so these are limits at infinity. So either our limit goes to infinity for a vertical asymptote, or the limit as x approaches infinity is equal to a, a number for a horizontal asymptote. All right, so here is a practice problem. I encourage you to, to pause it right now and um, try it out. And in just a few seconds here, I'm going to write in the solutions. All right, so you've paused it. Here are the solutions to these limits. As I approach negative two, negative two here, it goes from the right and from the left, and notice they're equal, so this is gonna be three. As X approaches one from the left, so as I approach one from the left, my y value here is going to be 1. That's my limit. As I approach from the right, my limit is negative 1. As I approach 4, it goes up and up from both sides. So I can say this is either positive infinity or I can say does not exist because you know what? If you don't have, if it goes on forever, well, there's no limit, right? It doesn't exist. There's no limit to what you can do. As x approaches infinity, notice it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which is our horizontal asymptote, so we're going to say this is zero. All right, that's it for today. Thanks.